Hey guys and girls, Marcus from Scene TV. We are down at the Greek on Halifax today. We are catching up with an Australian icon. She's an Adelaide icon. She's totally world renowned. She's Dorinda Hafner, everybody. Marriage celebrant, writer, actress, celebrity chef. There's pretty much nothing this woman can't do. We're going to find out all about her life. Dorinda Hafner, welcome to Scene TV, finally. Oh. Thank you, Marcus. It's been a long time. It has been a long time coming. I've been trying to plan this for a very long time. We've finally got oh. you here. We're going to sit here, eat, drink and chat. You're busy. And I'm busy. We That's have been very busy people. Where can we go with this conversation? Tell me everything. Let's no, start at the beginning. No holds bad. Go for it. Nothing off subject. Well, I don't blush. Put it that way. I'm not visible anyway. You can't <laughs> tell. She will never. Dorinda said we can go anywhere. Let's start at the very beginning. Yes. Um, what was life for you growing up? Start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. I, um, life was not too bad. I, I grew up in a fairly upper middle class family in, in West Africa, in Ghana. So um, I, I was one of the lucky ones whose parents, I had professional parents and uh, they were not poor, put it that way. They were well healed and they looked after me and I ended up going to a lot of um, prestigious schools, you know, like um, Methodist ladies. And then from then on, I went on to England you know, to go and train as an ophthalmic nurse and as an optician. One of the first things that brought you to the highlight of, um, you know, a lot of coverage was your celebrity chef work, correct? Well, I didn't start off like that. I didn't think I was going to end up in a kitchen. Because in the society in which I grew up in Ghana, a cook is not particularly a high status. In fact, you're regarded as a part of the hired help. So when my parents found out that I was going to do cooking, they just about had apple pens. So. <laughs> um, your husband's career brought you to Adelaide, mm -hmm. um, and then things changed radically for you. I mean, you have just done so much, oh. so much. Well, I thought I'd better do something about the racism. And I thought, I could either be bitter, I could be positive. So I decided to be positive. I thought, I should just steal the minds and hearts of young Australian children so that anytime they see a black person they have positive vibes. So for, I took to hugging children. I mean, in this day and age you're not allowed to go rush up and go and hug children because they think there's something wrong with you. But I wanted to hug the children mm. because I wanted them to smell the Chanel number no. 5. <laughs> <laughs> and also I wanted them to feel the love. So I started um, doing school shows but the kindergarten Oh, wait a minute, I'll, I'll have to eat it. Eat away, eat away, darling. I was invited to go to my children's kindergarten to talk to them about my origins and, what, and explain to them why they can't just penalize my children. They've been mean to my kids. They invited the parents to come of the evening for one hour and I decided I'm going to take some food. So I did chicken wings, three different flavors. Then I took some, I thought, children like, like dressing up. So I take some African clothes and costumes so they can dress up in my style. Children like making noise. And what best to give a child than a drum, an African drum, a variety of drums. So, and shakers and, you know, stuff like that. So I took a whole lot of stuff in there. What was supposed to have been one hour ended up being three hours. And the children didn't want to go home. The parents didn't want to go home. And so, after that, I started getting phone calls from different kindergartens and different parents. Can we have your recipes? You know, can we have you know, for the chickens? Can we have a recipe for... Them? So I ended up having to go to schools and I set up something called Africa in Schools. And in the middle of all of this, I had a strange thing. I had to go to lunch with a friend of mine who was a, a doctor at Flinders. And uh, she was a, the doctor for the staff at Flinders. And I got there and she said, oh, I've got something for you. She said, I heard on the radio that Bruce Beresford and South Australian Film Corporation are casting for a film called Break a Morant. And they're looking for Africans to make it authentic as some of the scenery was shot in South Africa. I said, well, I'm not South African, I'm West African. She said, well, I don't think they, they'll notice. <laughs> well, a lot of people don't know the difference. <laughs> Is there a difference? <laughs> oh, hello, hello. Yes, of course, but, you know, so I said, well, what do they want? And, and so I, uh, she said, do you want me to ring them? I said, no, no. I said, let me give your details to them. They're, they're maybe nothing now. I said, if you think that I'm going to go out there and wear a lap lap around my, my hips or something, bare breasted, carrying a spear, 
and, and uh, you know, with the bone through my hair, it's not gonna happen. I don't play savage. You did that for me it. once. Oh, but that was role playing. You, you, are. you naughty, naughty boy. <laughs> that's, that's just stirring. That's not. That's, that's not the accurate truth. No. It didn't happen quite that way. No. I was actually wearing that. <laughs> oh, you lie. See what I did? You. <laughs> He's terrible, isn't he? But I love him. I got a phone call from SA Film Corporation the following week. They say uh, they want me to come in and read for a part. And I said, well, send me the script. And say, yeah, we just want to confirm your address. And they sent me a script in a taxi. And it came. And I read it and I thought, mm, oh no, I don't have to play the uh, savage. I'm not going to be an honorable savage. It's just a legitimate part. However, I got two little kids. And the film was going to be shot in Barra. What am I going to do with my kids? I don't have family here. So I said, well, I rang them back and I said, if you can guarantee to write my children into the the movie as extras with me, we have a deal. Perfect. And everybody started ringing me up. Will you come and do uh, a cook for us? And I, I had this thing called um, uh, Tasty Bits and Spice, uh, Cuisine African, subtitled Tasty Bits and Spicy Tales. And Marcus, I thought I'd do it weekends when my husband was at home. So I thought I'd do Friday nights and Saturday nights, and that'll be it. It took off to such an extent that I had a two year waiting list. And people were, they wanted, not just Friday, they wanted Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays. Uh -huh. Ah, I gotta have a family life. And my husband, at the time, I'm not married anymore, I'm divorced, but at the time, he said, why don't you just do a TV show of it? You know? Do a segment, or a, maybe a series of six, half hours, and then that way you put the stuff out there and you can stay home and be what you want to be, you know? And, and I thought that's a good idea. Well, who is the most favourite person you've met? Whoopi. Someone that's absolutely met, blown met, your world. I met, I met quite a few people. Whoopi Goldberg, probably. Tell me about that. She wrote the foreword for my first book, A Taste of Africa. She's just... I was about to do a play with a state theatre company. We were in rehearsal. When Whoopi arrived here, and she was doing, I think it was on the edge of chaos, one of her theatre shows, a comic show. And I was also on the state government's uh, board for multicultural board. And so apparently they were approached by the promoters to see if the uh, Whoopi could meet some black people. So then I went to the show. And afterwards I went to stage door and it was jump packed with all these black people and white people, multicultural, everybody came from everywhere wanted to meet her. Chuck a block. And out in the middle of it, her, her uh, um, assistant, I think it was, I can't remember, came and looked at and said, anybody here during the Hofner here, during the Hofner here? And I thought, oh, that's me. <laughs> but that's not I put my hand, I said, yes, yes, yes. And all these women hung on to me and said, I'm doing this friend, I'm doing this friend, I'm coming with you. So anyway, they dragged me out of the like, kind of sea of faces up the stairs and I got up there and she was sitting way back, relaxed in some, on, on some sort of trunk thing. And uh, all these women who rushed in with me, rushed past me and ran to her. And I thought, I can't do this, I gotta wait, you know? So I, I held back and they were talking to her and she was doing them. And then suddenly she said, stop a minute. She said, is Dorinda here? And I said, yes, I'm here. And she said, come, come and sit here. Come and sit next to me. So I sat next to her and she chatted to me. She was really nice. And I am actually thinking of putting together a book because I do weddings, I love my weddings. Oh. I do weddings and I generally would do the opening address in anything up to 15 different languages, depending on the couple and if they want it. So I'm thinking that I've got all these love stories and I've asked the couple's permission. Why don't I put it together as a book? Maybe I should call it I Do, I Do or something. Now, down the camera for us, Dorinda, yes. wrapping up. Um, to um, everyone watching, um, the thing that inspires you to get out of bed every day. Oh. <laughs> The fact that I'm still here, the fact that there's another day to share goodness with the rest of the world, is very simple. I think of my grandkids and I want a better, a better world for them. So I think, well, I open my eyes in the mornings and I'm alive, I'm breathing. I can hear, I can see, that's a bonus. What excuse have I got to stay in bed and be miserable? No, I'm inspired by the will to live.
to be out there to share the good things in life with you and everybody else. And that's what I'm about. She's colourful, she's <laughs> vibrant, she's positive. She's an absolute fabulous lady. She's my icon. She's Dorinda Hafner. You've been watching Scene TV. I've been Marcus. We're going to see you for more really soon. Cheers. Hello.